for this week's challenge wednesday we have will and will presents to physical therapy with complaints of difficulty hearing the patient reports that loud sounds have gradually become muffled upon examination the patient is able to hear the sound of a vibrating tuning fork better on the mastoid than when placed outside of the ear which of the following is the most likely present so we look down at our answer choices we have a sensory neural hearing loss b bone conduction loss c press becusis and d is auditory processing disorder auditory processing disorder let's go ahead and jump into this question you can obviously see it's a bit more of this this vestibular we got to figure out what the heck are we dealing with now are you familiar with the whole bone conduction loss hearing loss sensory neural hearing loss uh, you know that sort of area because we need to go ahead and make sure that we're using the right special test understanding it so that we can rule this stuff in and out all right that's going to be really really important for this question now i will say from your coach right now i just want you to be prepared for vestibular i can't say anything for certain about the exam coming up but i just got a feeling right now just a feeling in my soul that vestibular is going to be an area that you will be able to dominate and, and rapidly increase your score. All right, so take it from your coach right now. Prepare for the vestibular area. Get ready to absolutely dominate it and boost your score. All right, you heard it here first. So let's jump into this question. We got Will presents to physical therapy with complaints of difficulty hearing. Okay, so I'm going to slow up there for a moment everything sounds pretty good pretty straightforward we got complaints of difficulty hearing though now we don't know anything about it just yet but we want to keep that in mind as we move forward so it says the patient reports that loud sounds have become muffled all right loud sounds have become muffled now the one thing about you know, difficulty hearing is that loud sounds can really become muffled with a lot of different hearing type of problems. Uh, there's sensory neural hearing problems, which are typically related to like age in a lot of cases, especially on the MPT, it's probably gonna be related to age, but um, a lot of times like inner ear problems, maybe ototoxicity of the hair cells um, can cause sensory neural hearing loss. It's really like an inner ear problem, okay? Well, sensory neural hearing loss can cause loud sounds to become muffled, yeah, but so can like a conduction hearing loss. All right, where sound is having difficulty traveling through the middle ear into the inner ear, that could still cause it. Okay, so there's a bunch of different reasons why that's the case. It's not giving me that much information right now. Let's go ahead and continue down the line. It says, upon examination, the patient is able to hear the sound of a vibrating tuning fork better on the mastoid than when placed outside of the ear. I know that was a long sentence. I got to go back and make some sense of it. Okay. So it says upon examination, the patient is able to hear a, uh, hear the sound of a vibrating tuning fork better on the mastoid than when placed outside of the ear. So do you know what that is? This is really important. Do you know why I would even have a tuning fork outside the ear or placing it on the mastoid? You should be familiar with this test. It's called the Rhines test. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Rhines test, R-I-N-N-E apostrophe S. It's a test that you definitely need to know for the MPTE. And it's where we take a uh, 512 hertz tuning fork. We're gonna strike it. And we're gonna place it on the patient's mastoid process of the suspected side. And we put, uh, put it on the mastoid process of the suspected a suspected side and then we ask the patient um, first of all can they hear it and then we want the patient to let us know when they can no longer hear it so that's the first part of the test all right and then as soon as the patient indicates to us like yes I, I, I can't hear it anymore then we move it 
to the outside of the ear, about a, a centimeter or two just right outside of the ear. And then we also ask the patient, okay, tell me when you can no longer hear it. So that's the test right there, all right? And so we're really looking for, can the patient you know, hear it more or hear it longer when it's outside of the ear? Can the patient not hear it at all? Like, that's what we're really looking for. But in this question, it already tells us, am I right? It says, upon examination, the patient is able to hear the sound of the vibrating tuning fork better on the mastoid than when placed outside of the ear. So the question stem says, which of the following is the most likely present? And now we have A, sensory neural hearing loss, B, bone conduction loss, C, presbycusis, and D, auditory processing disorder. So we need to go ahead and start breaking this down, eliminating out these answer choices. All right. So if you're not familiar with this Rhines test, we actually did get a very, very, uh, you know, identifying result here. The patient is able to hear the vibrating tuning fork better on the mastoid than when placed outside of the ear. Well, that's letting me know that the patient is having difficulty getting that sound from outside of the ear all the way into the inner parts. So can you remember from the beginning when I was talking to you about this and I was telling you that there was inner ear problems and then I told you that there was some conditions where you have the, the sound that's having difficult time getting through the middle to the inner ear? Well, if you don't remember, don't worry. We're gonna go over that right now as we go through these answer choices. So we have A, sensory neural hearing loss. Sensory neural hearing loss is typically when there's a problem with the inner ear, y'all. A lot of times it could just be age-related changes. But like I said, sometimes it could be ototoxicity. You know, when you're taking like a, a, a lot of antibiotics over time, well, it can mess up the hair cells inside of the ear and cause the patient to have sensory neural hearing loss. All right, but it also can come from things like infections and po possibly Meniere's disease. There's a, a few different reasons why we can end up with sensory neural hearing loss. But what do you need to know for the MPTE? That this one is more inner ear problems, inner ear problems. All right. And so here's the thing. When a patient has like sensory neural hearing loss, what you're actually going to see is the exact opposite of what we're seeing in the question. You're not gonna see that the patient can hear the vibrating tuning fork better on the mastoid than placed outside the ear. You're gonna actually have the situation where outside of the ear is significantly better than the mastoid. The patient continues to hear it for quite a bit beyond the mastoid. All right, and so here, it doesn't seem to be fitting that. I, I don't like it. I'm going to go ahead and put an X next to that one for now. Let's look at B. B says bone conduction loss, also known as conduction hearing loss. Ah, see, I, I like B, and the reason why I like B is it fits this picture, that the patient is able to hear the vibrating tuning fork on the mastoid, right? But as soon as it's placed outside the ear, the patient doesn't really hear it that well. Well, that's a conduction problem. What do you need to know about this? Is that a conduction hearing loss problem is when there's something going on with the middle ear. Something going on where the sound is not able to travel very nicely through the middle ear and into the inner ear. Y'all know something that could potentially cause that? This is going to be a little on the nasty side, but you know what I'm talking about. Some earwax could cause that. All right, so if you got a buildup of earwax in there, that can cause a conduction hearing loss problem. All right, what's another one? Well, if there's an overgrowth of bone, all right, that could also cause it. So the overgrowth of bone somewhere in that middle ear area or overgrowth of some type of soft tissue or a tumor, something that is gonna keep the, the sound from being able to propagate through the ear and into the inner parts of the ear. Through the middle ear into the inner parts of the ear. 
So I like bone conduction. Why? Because when you have bone conduction loss and you're using the Rhines test, the patient will be able to hear the sound of a vibrating tuning fork better on the mastoid than when placed outside of the ear. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark next to that. Let's look at C. C says presbycusis. Um, that term may not be as familiar to you. Um, I'll go ahead and spell it for those of you who are on the road right now. P-R-E -E is an as, uh, Edgar. S-B-Y-C-U-S-I-S. -S, presbycusis. What is this? It's age-related hearing loss, a.k.a. sensory neural hearing loss. Check that out. So this is a terminology thing right here, y'all. So if you are just able to pick up that presbycusis is the same thing as sensory neural hearing loss, then you would be able to say like, hey, those two are pretty much the same answer. I can rule out both of them. Now I have a very, very good like confidence level that A and C, sensory neural hearing loss and presbycusis are both not the right answer here. Let's look at the final. The final answer says D, auditory processing disorder. Okay, so auditory processing disorder can happen, you know, really to anyone, all right? Um, oftentimes you'll see this happening, uh, you know, in children. It's not super, super common. I would say about 5%, anywhere from 2 to 5% of, of children you'll see have this. and. And, and what it really is, is the child's inability to interpret what the sounds are. And so they have a hard time understanding, you know, when somebody's speaking to them or giving them commands or telling them to do a certain thing. They oftentimes will have trouble processing what it is that you're trying to tell them to do or even what they're hearing. And so a lot of the research is showing that they are able to hear you. They're just not able to interpret what they hear. Now, in this question, we have Will. It doesn't tell us an age for Will, so we can't assume any of that. I look at the question, though, and it says the patient reports that loud sounds have become gradually muffled or gradually become muffled. And so that's not consistent with auditory processing disorder because this is something that a patient has, all right? This isn't something that a patient necessarily develops over time, all right? In this case, it's not as common. And it's more common that we would even see it when the patient was younger anyway, all right? And so what we'll do for that one is very, very confidently rule that one the heck out the other piece I didn't even didn't even mention this is that the Rhines test is not there to figure out whether a patient has auditory processing disorder or not. Like that's not why we would use that. The Rhines test is really looking for some type of conduction loss, conduction hearing loss in one ear. Conduction hearing loss in one ear. And you might say, well, doesn't Ryan's test also look at sensory neural? Doesn't our, uh, you know, help you to determine if there's a sensory neural hearing loss problem too? Yeah, it does. But really, have you ever heard of the Weber's test, Weber's test, W-E-B-E-R? Well, that is a test that usually is accompanying the Ryan's test. Why? Because the Weber's test allows us to really determine sensory neural hearing loss better than just using the Rhines test alone. So if that ever comes up on the MPTE or practice exam or whatnot, understand that, yeah, the Rhines test is good for looking at conduction hearing loss, but it's really the Weber's test that helps to solidify whether it's sensory neural hearing loss or bone conduction, all right? So both tests used together is, you're most likely going to see it done that way, where both tests are used in the same examination. Boom, there you go. The answer here tonight is bone conduction hearing loss B. Congratulations to those of you who got that one correct. Hopefully you like that uh, extensive <laughs> explanation of this one right here. Listen, if Ryan's test, Weber's test are, are areas that you just are lacking in, 
I, I just please, please, please spend a little bit of time looking over these things, understanding it because it'll make it a lot easier for you when you have to go and apply it on questions that come up on the MPTE. All right. I'm just telling you, be prepared for it.